I have spent several nights with both the ASIR and the Stella Vita. And in this video, I'm going to give you the rundown between the two devices, pros and cons, which one should you get if you're looking to get a small astro computer for your telescope. We're going to start this rundown with probably the biggest argument for going with one over the other. And that is the fact that the ASI Air is brand locked. That means if you're buying an ASI Air, you are now forced to use ZWO's equipment mostly. I'll come back to that in a second. Whereas the um, Stella Vita from TubeTech is, uh, is open. It's not brand locked. You can put pretty much any device on there. They really made a big deal out of having like, a massive list of drivers that they support. So you have really good compatibility both with TubeTech's own equipment, but also with ASI Air or whatever equipment you want to put on, it's probably going to work with the TubeTech Stella Vita. Now, I said there was a bit of a caveat with the brand support on the ASI Air, and that's because it only goes for everything apart from mounts you can put the ASI Air on most mounts um, out there, most modern mounts at least. Um, simply, if it has a USB interface, there's a good chance that your ASI Air is going to be able to communicate with that mount. Um, so here, for some reason with the mount, um, ZWO has opened it up to other brands, but when it comes to cameras, filter wheels, um, uh, rotators, whatever other things you want to put on there, if it requires to talk to the device, then it needs to be a ZWO product. Um, of course, stuff like heater bands and stuff like that, where there's no data communication, it just supplies power, you can use that from any brand as well. But anything where it needs to communicate with the, with the device, it needs to be ZWO branded. Now, talking about hardware, hardware support, um, one thing that the ASI Air does support is what's called the camera rotator, so an automatic device that rotates the camera. Um, last year, I think, ZWO came out with their CAA, so the camera rotator thing. Um, this is not supported on the Stella Vita as of yet. Um, it's, the Stella Vita is still being actively developed, so there's a good chance that's going to change in the future. But at the time of this recording, at least, there is no support for camera rotators on the Stella Vita. And when it comes to software features, one feature that I feel is maybe missing on the Stella Vita is the live stacking. I know this is a feature that a lot of people really like on the ASI Air, where you can ask it to begin taking pictures, and as it takes pictures over the night, it lives stacks them, so you gradually see that result become better and better and better, and you still have access to the raw files afterwards, so you can go home and do a, a proper um, proper stack of it at home when you come back, but you have that option to see it live stack during the evening, which especially if you're doing um, public outreach stuff with it, then I think that's a really, really strong contest of why the, the ASA Air is a good choice. That is not yet something we have on the Stella Vita, but again, this is a software thing and TubeTech is actively developing the, uh, the Stella Vita, so there's a good chance that's something that's maybe going to come in the future. But again, at the time of this recording, there's no live stacking on the Stella Vita. One thing I really like, though, about the Stella Vita is the fact that it just has a massive SD slot on the side where you just put a standard SD card in and it stores all your pictures on it if you want to. I think there's also some internal storage, but I usually just store everything on the SD card because it's super convenient when you come home, you just unplug it and then plug it into your computer and transfer all the files. On my ASI Air, it does not have it. I know some, especially some of the older versions of the ASI Air does come with, a, with an SD card slot. But the newer one, um, this has been removed. If you want to expand the storage of the newer ones, you're going to need a USB stick and that's going to take up one of your, your USB ports. So if you want to transfer files out of the ASI Air, you're either going to connect to it over its Wi-Fi and then connect to it as if it were a network attached storage and then pull the drive or the data out of it like that, or you can connect to it via USB and then it just shows up as an external drive on your PC and you can transfer files over USB. So you have plenty of options um, to get the data out of it if you want to um, do it, but I just think it's more convenient, you know, just SD card out, SD card and computer done, and then put it back when you're done. Now talking about taking up USB ports, um, the ASI Air has something called station mode, um, where you ask it to connect to your home Wi-Fi and then as long as you're connected to the same Wi-Fi, and you can also connect to your ASI Air, and you don't have to be connected to the Wi-Fi that the ASI Air makes. 
um, in order to be connected to it. This is a really strong feature and something I personally use quite a lot and think is really, really nice. You can do something similar on the TubeTex Stella Vita. However, in order to use this, I think they call it base mode or something else. They, they call it something slightly different. But in order to do that, you do need an external dongle. It comes provided with the device, but it means you need a little USB dongle that you plug into one of the USB ports. They even label one of the USB ports Wi-Fi to, um, to make it easier for you to figure out where to plug it in. Um, but again, that means it takes up one of those four USB ports that's on the device. Now, briefly before I talked about the mount support, and both of these devices has excellent support to most manufacturers of mounts, even some of the more obscure ones. I've been testing it with my um, Proxy Sky UMI 17S, which is a, not a very common mount to, uh, to encounter. The Stella Vita had dedicated drivers for the UMI series of mounts, which was great to see, and the ASIR could connect to it by using a generic um, open step uh, driver. However, that also means because the Stella Vita had dedicated drivers for the specific mount, it was more feature rich. I have access to more settings inside the um, uh, inside the Stella Vita than I had inside the, uh, the ASIR when it comes to controlling my mount. The integration with the ASIR, while it does work, is just not as stable as what we see with the Stella Vita when it comes to these more obscure mounts. Um, for instance, the home button, when I ask the, the mount to slew back to its home position, sometimes just doesn't work with the, um, with the ASIR. It's something I've never seen happen. As I said, I also have access to more settings of the Stella Vita. Um, and I've also noticed that the ASIR, sometimes during pole alignment, when it does the 60 degree turn, it would just start, stop for like a, or it would, it would start slewing, but the ASIR would just say, oh, we're done slewing, I'm gonna take the picture while the mount is still slewing. So there's clearly some kind of compatibility issues here with the mount that I've never encountered um, on the Stella Vita. Another big selling point for me is reliability. And in my experience, the ASIR is the more reliable, it is the more mature product. It has also been on the market longer, um, but it's just like, yeah, there's some quirks sometimes you need to work around, but once you get everything up and running, it's rock solid. I mean, I have uh, no problems with leaving that, taking images for hours and hours upon end, and I know that it will execute the plan I've asked it to. The Stella Vita is a bit more finicky to work with. It has a tendency to have connection issues, and while the ASIR still has that, it's definitely worse on the Stella Vita, where suddenly you just lose connection for no apparent reason. And I've even encountered, it only happened to me once, um, but I've encountered a situation where I set up a plan on the Stella Vita, everything was running, it was taking pictures, and like two hours into the plan, it just decided to stop. The plan was like not finished, there still was many images left in the plan that needed to be executed, but the device decided that, nah, I'm done. I don't want to take any more pictures. I couldn't figure out why. It just happened. It only happened once of all the nights that I've been out with it. And if I just as I start the plan, it just picked up and continued. So I have no idea what happened. But it happened. It happened once. I'm not able to reproduce it. So overall reliability definitely goes to the ASIR. But now that we are talking about maturity of these two products, as I said, ASIR by far the most mature product right now. But while researching this video, I was watching all the reviews of it. I was watching one from Chive and from about six months ago. And when I compare to the features he showed and the reliability he showed in his video from about half a year ago, compared to my experiences now, I'm frankly amazed at how far TubeTech has managed to push this device in just six months. It's a completely different device. It's a lot more mature, there's a lot more features than what we saw just six months ago. So it just shows that TubeTech is definitely pushing this device to be better and better over time. And as much as they can do with software, of course, that can be approved. Some of the hardware issues, of course, is going to be more difficult to fix after a sale. But the fact that it keeps getting new firmware updates means that I think over time, there's a good chance that the Stella Vita 
is going to catch up to the SIR when it comes to features and reliability and all that stuff as they begin to iron out those bugs that's definitely still in the firmware. So overall, my recommendation would be if you want just a reliable product that works out of the box and don't mind the extra price of the ASIR and also paying a little bit extra for all your other equipment like cameras and filter wheels and rotators and whatever you want to put on because ZWO's equipment is just that little bit more expensive than the competitors. Well, if you don't mind that extra price but want the reliability, then the ASIR is probably for you. If you want to take a gamble on a device that's still maturing, um, but that's cheaper and you get a wider range of equipment available to you, and maybe you can already integrate with some of the equipment you already have and save a lot of money that way, then I would definitely say that you should take a look at the, uh, at the Stella Vita. But of course the start of show here is the Stella Vita sitting down here at the bottom and it's gonna be the watch gonna control everything. The first thing you need to do after you power it on for the first time is you need to connect to the ASIR's own built-in Wi-Fi. You can make it connect to your own 